Digital Innovations in the GCC. Hi everyone, it's a pleasure to be here. I, the minute I landed in Malta, I fell in love with Malta. It's gorgeous. And AIBC took over Malta in these three days. <laughs> So I'm honored to be here. I'm here to speak about digital transformation and innovation happening in the Middle East. Um, I'm a tech entrepreneur. I, out of the nine companies I own, seven of them are all tech-based. And I had to shut down seven of my companies and transform them, transform them into digital companies. Why? Because tech is the future. Now, the Middle East is going through um, a huge tech transformation. What does that mean? It means that the country is promising a lot of growth when it comes to economical and social impact for entrepreneurs and investors. So a lot of investors and entrepreneurs are actually moving to the Middle East, specifically the GCC, because of the promises that are happening there and because of the transformation that's happening there. Governments, individuals, uh, businesses, they are all converting and they're all jumping on the tech uh, movement to improve their processes, their products, their businesses, and their services, and their connect connectivity overall. Now you must be asking yourself, what is digital transformation or innovation? Digital transformation or innovation is when integrating, when, you, when a country or uh, let's say a region is integrating technology in every aspect of life. And that fundamentally changes the way you live your life. So this is a digital transformation. Now, you must be asking yourself, why is the Middle East and the GCC becoming an emerging uh, region when it comes to technology? Number one, you have government initiatives. I come from Dubai. My government is online. Like, I can show you my phone, everything I do in the government, whether it's my documents, whether it's my health documents, whether it's anything business i don't need to walk into an office anymore all i have to do is log into my app and integrate everything in it and just get everything done so government initiatives and governments pushing for uh, innovation and technology is what's pushing um the gcc to be one of the most emerging uh region when it comes to technology that's one reason second reason i don't know if you guys know this but the middle east has the youngest population in the world so the youth, when it comes to hunger and being uh, tech savvy, the Middle East is the ground for that. Because we all know that the youth and the young uh, generation, they're all about technology. That's the second reason. Now, the third reason um, is that, as <laughs> the third reason is that because it's an unt untapped market, there's a lot of opportunity happening there. Now, let me list for you a couple of reasons why you or anyone should be thinking about moving to the Middle East to actually start a tech investment or invest in tech or even start a tech company. Actually, I gathered a list from the government and I have it here. And this list benefits and shows you why you benefit from being in the GCC when it comes to technology and the emerging technologies. So. Number one, if you are a tech entrepreneur or a tech investor, all right, you want to be in a country that has a vision. For example, Dubai's vision is to be the hub of technology in the Middle East and the world. When your country wants to be something like that, and when a country is racing to be something like that, this is where opportunity is. This is where um, you go to thrive because there's a vision and you're part of that vision. So it's very important. I gathered this list, and this list has been gathered from so many government sectors in the UAE. And just to show you why the UAE or anywhere in the GCC is where you need to be if you're a tech entrepreneur. So number one, smart projects and smart cities. When it comes to urban planning, the whole region is moving into the smart city technology, which means that if you're involved in urban planning when it comes to your tech company or involved in anything related to smart cities, this is a place where you can actually invest or start a business in that sector. Number two, health tech. I don't know if you guys know this, but during COVID, the UAE was one of the countries that survived and thrived during COVID and after COVID immediately. 
Now, when a region realizes that, oh my God, people are stuck at home and they can't go out in a crisis, we have a problem. How do we bridge a solution for humanity and everything they can and cannot do in the time of crisis? And this is when the government immediately shifted everything digitally. So I have an app that shows everything, my vaccines, blah, 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 all the things I've done, my health conditions, all my checkups on my phone, which makes it easier to travel, easier to move around. And even when I go to a hospital, let's say in Malta, I have all my history on my app. This is where health tech becomes a hub in the Middle East. So if you're into health tech, that's a, that, like, that's a good location to be in. Third, as I mentioned earlier, the Middle East has the youngest population in the world. So when you have the youngest population in the world, we call them the iPad generation. Now my generation, I was born in the 80s. So these people are very tech savvy and they want a better way of living, easier way of living, convenience through technology. I used to, when I was younger, in my 20s, I used to drive to get food. I used to go to get things. Now everything is done online on my chair. It's a click of a finger. And the youth are hungry for this. So when it comes to startups and young people wanting to invest or start technology companies, the Middle East is an amazing hub for that to happen. E-commerce, number four. E-commerce is something that's growing tremendously in the Middle East. So if you're in the e-commerce business, this is where you want to be. By 2025, the market's going to be uh, worth around $49 billion in 2025, just in the Middle East itself. And because it's a country, it's a region that's starting to move into that e-commerce place. It's an untapped market. So if you're in the business, that's a good place to be. And people are embracing e-commerce so much because of like how it makes just life easier there. So e-commerce, I have an e-commerce platform. And to be honest, like it's doing great all over the world, but it's a money making machine in the Middle East because e-commerce is an emerging, uh, tech platform when it comes to the GCC. The next point is fintech. Now we know that the banking system in America, all over the world, they've been doing this for so long, right? But in the Middle East, they are just moving now into online banking, online processing, uh, payment processing um, methods. So if you're into fintech, if you're into um, any kind of payment related uh, tech company, the Middle East is growing in this. They are actually hungry, looking for people. The government was hunting startups from all over the world to bring them to create uh, payment gateways, banking processes, and all these things. So when it comes to fintech, this is also the place to be. Education tech. When I was in school, I carried a bag filled with, I think a lot of you would relate to me, carried a bag with a lot of books. My son has an iPad, and everything is on his iPad. So... The government is trying to bridge a gap between educational technology, like ed edutech, and between uh, education. And it's happening. All the schools are integrating. They're looking for startups to actually help them in that process of transformation. There is an appetite. There is hunger when it comes to uh, education tech or edutech when it comes to the Middle East. Next, cybersecurity. Now, if a region is attracting all these tech companies, there is a big uh, chance and a big threat when it comes to cybersecurity. Um, my business partner, he is 22 years old, and he does the cybersecurity for all the governments. So this is where the government is allowing a lot of tech entrepreneurs to come in and actually emerge in the region and grow. So cybersecurity is huge in the Middle East, huge in Dubai, because when you attract such businesses, there is a risk that comes with it. So there's an opportunity in that section as well. Now, another point that I realize not a lot of countries are doing around the world is that flex government is giving flexibility and they're giving accessibility to entrepreneurs. First of all, they roll the red carpet for you so you can come to the region and invest or start a company. Second thing is they are doing a lot of things that supports entrepreneurs. For example, for example, tax returns. They're helping a lot of entrepreneurs support them when it comes to tax returns and all these things. Number one. Number two, flexibility. They are, the governments are adapting. They're changing the rules almost every single day to accommodate entrepreneurs from all over the world and to make it easier. 
If a business license was for $10,000, now it's for $1,000. If it took 30 days, now it takes one day. It takes even a minute online. So they're trying to accommodate because it's such a young region. Um, the UAE is 50 something years old, so it's a young country. So they're trying to like, as much as they can, they are a startup as well. They're learning and they're more flexible when it comes to entrepreneurship and giving entrepreneurs the chance to actually be in the Middle East. So after like thinking of all these things that I spoke about, um, I think maybe 40% of my investors, 40%, no, 55, I'll say 60% of the people that I know in tech have all moved to the Middle East. They all say, we're going to come for a week to check out Dubai. Two years later, <laughs> they're still there because opportunity, because of like uh, flexibility, because of how, like, I'll give you an example. We have something called the Youth Hub in, the, in Dubai. The Youth Hub is an office in the, in the same building as the minister cabinet. What happens there is that all the youth go there to have meetings, to have, um, let's say, business meetings, to have friends meetings. It's a coffee shop with like a huge space to just sit and work. It's a co like co-working space. Every single day, you have the ministers going down, scouting for startups and tech, and emerging them with their business model when it comes to government. When you have a government that thinks like that, and they're not a monopoly when it comes to like working with companies. It's not like, hey, let's just work with XYZ from this country because we've been working with them for 10 years. No, they are working with young entrepreneurs. They're trying to push as much as they can because they have a vision. And the vision is to be the hub of technology in the Middle East. This is actually um, an amended vision in the vision of Dubai. They want to be the number one country when it comes to technology. And we all know that they, they became the number one in so many things. Dubai is always like bigger, taller, wider, thicker. <laughs> That's how the UAE and Dubai is. So they are really emerged when it comes to technology and they're giving all the opportunities for people to actually grow. So if I'm a tech entrepreneur from the Middle East, to all of you tech entrepreneurs or investors out there, if you want to um, expand, if you want a fresh opportunity, if you want a support system, if you want an untapped market, the GCC and the Middle East is the place for you to be. Now, you must be asking yourself, what is the GCC? So the Middle East is the Middle East, but the GCC is like the European Union in the Middle East. It's like a couple of countries that work together, that support each other, and that is, um, I'd say, from the same kind of area zone, similar to the European Union. So that's the GCC, and the GCC is growing so much. You have Saudi, you have... Um, the UAE, you have Kuwait, you have Bahrain, they're all thriving when it comes to technology. So my advice for all of you, if you're thinking, it's easy, it's a click away, do your research, you can get your license online, visas are easy to do, so they are trying to make it easier for everyone to come and grow there. And to be honest, we don't have taxes in Dubai, so that's an added value um, to, to being an entrepreneur in Dubai, because when I meet uh, people in America, and I'm sitting in like meeting rooms, I try sometimes to register myself as a vendor so I can get paid from my partners and stuff like that. Every time I get I register as a vendor, it's funny because the system uh, cannot, the system does not allow me to move forward after point number nine because it says fill up your tax information. I'm like, guys, we don't have taxes there. They're like, yeah, yeah, but your, you know, your personal tax. I said, we don't have tax. Um, any I, any tax housing? I was like, we don't have taxes there. So. It's hard to explain to people how a world with no tax looks like. In the Middle East or in the GCC, we have just a VAT, which is a 5%. And for a business, that's amazing. So if you're trying to also like escape taxes, like, am I saying something illegal? <laughs> but it's a good place to like grow, thrive, and like make money and expand. Thank you so much. I'm Sara Madani. Thank you. <laughs>